Good evening. And tonight's study, I hope is interesting, it's a Bible study. And I've been in many Baptist churches in Connecticut, New England, and in Florida. And what I find in many, not all, not all, many, is they believe the King James Bible, and I am King James only. Absolutely no other Bible. And I'm amazed in these churches that their activities, their beings, and I don't think they know their Bible. And some of the things is what the events of the church that they call. Now tonight's study is a, a Baptist church will have what they call a visitation. And the merits of visitation are good. They're going to go out and the correct way is to spread the gospel. The incorrect way is come to our church Sunday morning. The correct way is reach the lost with the gospel that their hopes will be saved. And the improper way is about my church and about me and about who I am and what we are and come Sunday morning, will you? And if you just say this prayer, God will be pleased. The sinner's prayer. There's a right way of witnessing and there's a wrong way of witnessing. And there's a right form of words and there's a wrong way of words. And we're going to look at 15 times in the King James Bible the word uh, visitation shows up. And we're going to look at all 15. We're going to look at the context of the word visitation. And is it a proper word to use in a church setting, a church assembly of reaching the lost, or quite actually do our pastors not understand the Bible that says, study to show thyself approved, rightly divine the word of truth. So number one is number 1629 is the first place that visitation shows up. And there's a rule in the Bible study. As a doctor of theology, I learned it's the rule the first time a word shows up in the Bible. And the very first place they show up sets the pace for that word throughout the rest of the Bible. God shows up Genesis 1.1. So number 1629, it will be about a group of men that have rebelled against Moses and the authority. And God and Moses are angry with them. And number 16, you've got Korah, David, and Abiram. And if you studied your Bible and you were in the per proper church, you may know these names. You may understand what they did. And what will happen is the earth will open up and it will swallow the families, the tents, the goats, the, the, the camels, and everything that has to do with Korah, David, and Abiram. Now, not all the families, but the ones who were involved in the sin. So number 1629, we find... Moses explaining what is about to happen, the judgment of these men and family. If these men die a common death, stroke, heart attack, natural causes of all men, or they be visited after the visitation of all men, The Lord has not sent me.
by the visitation of all men by the plague or by the sword or some usual judgment, according to John Wesley. So visitation shows up the first time in the Bible with death. And it's with a plague or a sword or another kind of judgment. Famine. Destruction. Outside the realm of a natural death. I would even maybe put COVID-19 as a visitation on men. And we know that the Lord will open up the earth and they will go alive down into the pit, into hell, alive. That's the first time. It has a reference to a plague, a sword, death, unusual. You say, well, okay, well, you know, we're going out before they die and telling them about Jesus. That, that sounds good. That sounds great. Again, there are sides to the sides. There are people who go out there with the gospel. And there are people who go out there for the church and for self. And they invite them Sunday morning. What if they die before Sunday morning? Talk about death. So if we were to stop here, Visitation would be, we're going visitation Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. We're going to go bring a plague, a sword, or unusual judgment upon the people. If we stop right there. If we use the rule or the law of first mention in the Bible. Do you bring a plague, a sword, or unusual judgment? Job chapter 10, verse 12. Job 10, verse 12. Now I'll be using the Geneva Bible, and now I'll be using John Wesley for help. We're not going to go to the Hebrew, and we're not going to go to the Greek. We don't do that here. We may go to Webster's 1828. But Job 10, 12 says, Thou hast granted me life. Job talking about God and favor. God has given me life. And God's given me favor, riches, a wife. I know his children died, but God gave them to him. Wealth. Health. Job 10, 12 would be, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And thy visitation, the visitation of God, not man, has preserved my spirit. Man is a body, soul, and spirit. And it would be a fatherly care and providence that you have preserved me talking to God. My life. God, you have watched over me every day and every moment. So when a church goes out on visitation, are you bringing a plague, a sword of death? Are you going to preserve? Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you preservance. You're trying to tell them, hopefully, about the gospel and about death and a life of Jesus Christ and not about you and your church. That God can do great things for you. I hope you don't give them the prosperity gospel. Because salvation is not going to make your life wonderful and great on this earth. But when you die, it will be wonderful, great, and excellent. I hope you tell these people the truth. Alright, so. Two, we're down to two. Isaiah, I mean, no, excuse me. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 3. For a minute there, I thought it's the first standard. Isaiah 10 3. And what will ye do in the day of visitation? Here's a day of 
visitation. And the church has, we have a day or a night of visitation. And in the desolation, which shall come from afar, whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? Now the verse is talking about Israel and the Assyrians. He's talking to Israelites. He's not talking to Christians. The Assyrians are coming. And it's a day of visitation. Assyria will take Israel into captivity. Are you as a church going out to take those people in captivity? Alright, I understand that when you go out the people who are lost, they're in captivity of the devil. But as a body of Christians, are you out there bringing the sword, bringing death, bringing disease? Maybe a preservant. But are you bringing an enemy for captivity? Now, much, much of these verses are in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 8.12. Jeremiah, Judah is going to go into captivity under Babylon. And there's much rebuke for the sinning people of Judah. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not all ashamed. Not all. Some were ashamed, some weren't. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation. we got day of visitation. We've got time of visitation. They shall be cast down. Saith the Lord. That's Judah. When you go out visitation as a church. Now I'm going to bring this question up each and every time. Are you casting down the people you're visiting? If you're going to cast them down, you ain't going to get anywhere with the gospel. You're going to get a door slammed in your face. In the time of the visitation, you'll be cast down. I'm just reading from the King James Bible. Jeremiah 10, 15. They are vanity, nothing, emptiness. The work of errors and the time of their visitation, they shall perish. When you go knocking on their doors as a church, are they going to die? Pretty much not really. They will die. But in soul winning and witnessing, are we not? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. And yet the Bible verses that we have looked at visitation, they shall perish. We've seen sword. We've seen disease. We've seen destruction. We've seen abomination. And the visitation is when God shall reckon with Babylon upon the idols and gods of Judah. It's a judgment. As a church, are you going out visitation as a judgment? Now I know when we witness, we are to judge. And I will judge people I am witnessing with two, three basic ways. I've had people come up to me, and they may have been gay, but what do you think about you know being gay? What's God say about being gay? I say, well, wait a minute, let's put that away. Have you ever stolen? And I will begin with the judgment of theft, stealing. Have you ever told a lie? I will be a part now with judgment 
with being a liar. You are the perfect child. No, you're not the perfect child. Then I will deal with the judgment of honoring thy mother and father. And with those judgments and show that all have sinned and come short to glory of God, I can go somewhere. But if you go in visitation and you bring the vanity and the errors of the work and you bring the reckoning upon it, you're not to be watching that television, you sinner. Look at your day. You got an ashtray. I see that. Be and listen, I've heard of churches that do that. You're going to burn in hell for what you know. You're going to get the door shut on you. I've even heard street preachers foolishly do that. That's a visitation we're talking about now. Era of wrath. You're going to hell because you're a sinner. You're smoking that cigarette, wearing that mini dress. That's not how it's done. That's God's job. So does your visitation bring perishment? Death. I hope you don't. Well, I've been action news, church goes out knocking on doors, and wherever they knocked on doors, people are found dead. You better not. Jeremiah eleven twenty three. Jeremiah eleven twenty three. There shall be no remnant left of them. For I will bring evil upon the men of Ananoth. That's where Jeremiah lived. The family and the people of Jeremiah's hometown hated him. And they wanted him dead. Even the year of their visitation. These are Jews. These are people in Judah. So when you go out visiting, on your day of visitation, do you bring evil? No. That's the visitation, Jeremiah eleven twenty three. Bring evil. Wow, I didn't know that word meant that in the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Why haven't these pastors studied their Bible? Le uh, 11, 23, 23, 12. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as the slippery ways of darkness. That don't sound good. They shall be driven on and fall thereof. That's not a good word. I will bring evil upon them. Even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. There's that evil again. And a slippery way. And darkness. And a fall. Friend, Baptist Church, you go out visitation. Do you bring slipperiness? Do you bring darkness? Do you bring a fall? Do you bring evil? Some do. Because they bring their church. They bring their fellowship day. They bring, we're going to have chicken. We're going to have movie night. We're going to have bowling. We're, anything but the gospel. But is that the visitation, Jeremiah 23, 12? I hope not. Jeremiah 46, 21. I'm just looking at the King James Bible. Also, her hired men are in the midst of her like fatted bullocks. Just fat. For they also turned back and are fled away together. They did not stand because the day of their calamity was come upon them and the time of their visitation. All right, you got people who won't do nothing. They won't turn to God to be saved. They have a day of calamity at the time of their visitation. Do you bring calamity when you go out visiting? 
Are you hired by the church? I, I bet there's probably churches somewhere they hire people to do it. They pay. Which is foolish. But I guarantee you, there's probably some churches out there that will hire Visitation Night will pay you. Are you fat? You're not willing to stand? Is that your visitation? Jeremiah 48, 44. Jeremiah 48, 44. He that fleeth from fear shall fall into a pit, a hole. And that's kind of pit where they where they dig to catch lions and game. It's a deep pit, and they put leaves and branches over it so the the, the prey would fall. It also pictures pit as a hell. He that gets out of the pit, okay, it's not hell. Shall be taken in a snare, a trap. You know, they got that little thing on the ground, and you step your foot in it, boom, you're hanging from a tree. You see this in cartoons, if you're old like me. You've seen these things in the Bug, Bugs Bunny, and the Coyote in the Run Run, and the other such cartoons. For I will bring upon it. Even upon Moab, the children of Lot, even the year of visitation, saith the Lord. All right, church, we're going on visitation midweek, 6 o'clock. Do you bring a pit? And when they come out of that pit, do you put them in a trap? Some churches do. Some churches will trap the people into saying this, this prayer, this sinner's prayer, and believing that they're saved and they're not. That's the wrong kind of visitation. And I have dealt with people who were involved in a sinner's prayer. And you can't all oh, say, sure don't act like it. And this is not Israel. This is not the church. This is Moab. Have you gone to Moab in your visitation? Jeremiah 50, 27. Jeremiah 50, 27. Slay all your bullets. Let them go down to slaughter. Get your hamburger. Woe unto them. For their day is come, the time of their visitation. You know, people are just living today. They they eat, drink, and be merry. They eat and drink, they're sad. They eat, drink, and work, and just a bunch of cows and, and goats is running around doing what they do. And death is coming. And they'll end up in hell. I hope you go out and warn them of hell. I hope you go out there and tell them about death and hell and being a sinner. And the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. But in your time of visitation, you go out and slaughter them? Let's take let's take the verse literal like some people do. Do you go to the to the cows? Do you go to the bulls and witness the visitation? We're going out to the barnyard. I know churches in Connecticut that you can bring your pets and your animals and foolishly they will bless them. Nonsense. I know somebody, she witnessed to her golden retrievers and they got saved. Nonsense. Jeremiah 51, 18. 
This is what the Bible says. They are vanity, empty, nothing, worthless. The work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. There's that perishing again. There's that vanity again. Didn't we read that? Is that what you bring? That was in Jeremiah 10, 15. That is repeated. And I said, do you bring vanity when you go? Some churches do. Your church, your attendants, your pastor, your people, your nursery, your fellowships are vanity. The work of errors. You're in the Greek. Your programs, your VBS are work of errors. And for some people that go out, some churches that go out, in visitation, the people will perish and still go to hell. Even after they visit the church or became members of the church. They still become vain and error and no salvation. Hosea 9-7. Hosea 9-7. I hope that you, you, know, you pause Write it down. The days of visitation are come. This week we're going to have visitation. The days of recompense are come. Do you go out visitation? Do you go out recompensing? What's going on? A punishment for evil. Do you give punishment in your visitation? Or come. Israel shall know it. Israel's not the church. Israel's not the Gentiles. The prophet is a fool. The false prophet. The spiritual man is mad. It's insane. For the multitude of thy iniquity and that great hatred. Micah 7 4. Micah 7 4. The best of them is a briar. They're just an estimation counted. Honest, but they're thorns and briars. You know, thorns and briars, they, they hurt. They get stuck to you. They're a pain to get off your clothes. The most upright is sharper than a thorn edge. It does damage, it does blood. The day of the watchman and thy visitation coming a great day of pain and briars and prickers and thorns and the curse of the earth is coming do you bring pain and blood when you go out visiting I hope it's pain that they have sinned against a holy God but is that your visitation? Pain and suffering, disease and sword and death. Luke 19.44 Luke 19.44 And shall lay thee down even to the ground This is this is the this is the city of Jerusalem. You been to Jerusalem to day of visitation? Jewish. You know what I mean? These verses set Moab. It's Jewish. It's a Jewish context. Most of the verses. Thy children within thee, the city of Judah, I'm the city of Jerusalem. 
They shall not leave thee one stone upon another. That's the temple and the city. Because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. And there are preach there are preachers who get up there and the Old Testament they look forward to the cross. Jesus said, You didn't even know who I am. You did not know the Messiah showed up. And you're going to take the Messiah and you're going to crucify him. And God is going to destroy Jerusalem in 70 AD. But they look forward to the cross. Nonsense. So when you go out as a church, are you the Messiah going to the Jewish people? Some churches, some pastors believe they are holier than God. They are the fourth member of the Trinity. Are you the Messiah? Luke 19.44 Your church. You're the bride of Jesus Christ. And if you're going to go knocking on doors in your neighborhood, I don't know what the odds are, but they're not very favorable unless you live in a Jewish community. Lastly, First Peter 2.12 Having your conversation, your actions, your doings, what you are, honest among the Gentiles. We go up, are you honest? Do you do what you're supposed to do correctly, rightly, without griping and complaining? It's Monday. I hate Monday. Oh, it's a rainy day. It's a miserable day. I can't stand my job. I hate my... Oh, my boss is giving me more work. I've got troubles and problems. Oh, my wife and my children. That's not your conversation, honest. Before the Gentiles, the lost. All right? That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they will lie about you. Well, I saw this Christian do that. I saw, and they're going to lie. I got plenty of Gentiles, unsaved, Jewish, and Christians that lie and speak evil of me. I don't care. But I'm honest. They may be, I mean, they may buy your good work. You do good. Which they shall behold, they're watching you do good, but they are not speaking good of you. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, Wesley says the time when he shall give them fresh offers for his mercy. Are you living such a life that when somebody witnesses to them, I have witnessed to many people lost. And they, well, I know a Christian, I know a pastor, I know a church, and then there's bad condensation. That's me. I don't know if it's true, I don't know if it's right. I don't have all the facts. But what if it is true? And you are preventing them from getting saved by your rotten, miserable life. Alright, what if they are lying? And somebody goes witnessing to them, and it pricks their heart. They know they're supposed to do right. They know they have a co-worker. They know they have an uncle. They know they have a dad. They know they have a mother. And they're doing right. And they are not. And then also a day of visitation. The day they die. And they end up at the great white throne judgment. 
In their day of visitation, they will be judged by the holy and righteous God, Jesus Christ. And we shall judge them. And there are people at the, at the, at the farmer's market, they speak ill of me. But I, I preach the gospel. And they're going to stand before God one day, before the good works I try to do and live before them. And they're going to have to profess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That that man over there that preached to us that I hated him. He was, he was right. And I was wrong. And here I stand condemned before a holy and righteous God. Because he was right and I was wrong. And God is righteous. It could be means of a salvation. And it could be means of a damnation. And that's it. But I got one more thing to add. Did you know that in the Roman Catholic Church, there's a visitation? You would have to know that the Baptist, and it doesn't match to the Baptist visitation, but there is a particular word, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and it is called visitation. It's the visitation of, of the visit of what they say is the Blessed Virgin Mary. After Joseph and Mary had intercourse and had children, she wasn't a virgin no more. Who was pregnant with Jesus. And when she came to, to visit Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist. And this is recorded in Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 56. And they call this the visitation. And it is a Christian, it's not Christian, but this is the Catholic Church. For them, it is a Christian feast of Mary coming to Elizabeth. Celebrating the 31st of May. And certain calendars is the July 2nd. Try to find something here. This goes back all the way to 1604. But it originated with Pope Urban the Fourth or Six. Six. In 1389. So I'm going to assume, and I don't really know much, it's possibly the Catholic visitation came, which is not Bible. It's not called Mary coming to Elizabeth, it's not called the visitation. And it was never a feast day in the Bible. And the Catholics call it visitation. Mary did not witness the gospel of Jesus Christ to Elizabeth. There was no gospel of Jesus Christ. And there are Baptists out there who go out in visitation and they don't bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, that's the Bible. And I say personally, of my own opinion I think the church needs another word for visitation night I think by what we read the 15 times in the scriptures I don't think the word visitation is proper but right now I am in America and I'm probably talking to Americans and you've got your freedom And yet we will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. 
for what we do and what we don't do. And that which we do that is good and that which we do is evil. Wood, hay, and stubble. Gold, silver, and precious stones. And an inheritance. 